our daughters asked him. Until when should we wait for you, Dad? I think until the 3 of December, for sure. We believed in him. And without any questions, we moved into the hotel in the morning of the 23. There, we started our new temporary life. Going back and forward, hotel to school, school to hotel, hotel to college, college to hotel, hotel to work, work to hotel. On the 6th of July, four and a half months before his departure, he went to the Japan's Ministry of Transportation to ask for a flight permission. He wanted to be sure that this trip was legally authorized, and because of that, he also asked for permission to the United States government. On the following day, the Japan's Ministry of Transportation denied his request due to the lack of security measures. He was very confused at the time because the United States and Japan had very different opinions and thoughts about the trip. After rethinking the plan, he decided to change the location and date of his departure. All these back and forward decisions made me feel more concerned about this adventure and I shared with him my thoughts and worries. He said, let me do this, it's the last thing that I ask you for. And the day arrived. For the test drive, the only demand from the ministry was to stay tied by a rope to the ground. And that's what he did for a couple of hours. The balloon, with only two square meters and one of depth, had fantasy written on its side. Also 200 bottles of Japanese brandy has weights. In this way, the liquid, due to the alcohol composition, would not freeze with the cold temperatures of the atmosphere. The basket of the balloon was also made from special wood to allow fruitability in case that it fell into the sea. He also took with him oxygen that could be used for a period of 48 hours, food for a week, latitude and longitude measurement instruments, altitude meter, a marine rescue device, speedometer, a radar, five blankets, a phone, airness, a parachute, oxygen mask, a map, passport, the flag of Japan and the United States, a camera, sunny glasses, American dollars, and contacts from some friends from the States. He was wearing a thermal suit to protect him against the cold, as well as a helmet that he previously tested inside a big fish freezer. The stratosphere temperature would be at minus 60 degrees Celsius, and he really wanted to be sure that he was well protected. Attached to the wood baskets, there were 26 vinyl balloons full of helium, six with a diameter of 6 meters and 20 with a diameter of 3, and has a reserve six more balloons. I heard from a sponsor that he had all the equipment that he needed for the trip, except a wireless device. That concerned me a little bit in case the phone stopped working. After we arrived at the hotel, I called him right away, just like he asked me to. His voice sounded full of joy and accomplishment. He told me that a big friend of his, and also a sponsor of this adventure, appeared with some of his students to give him support. Is everything okay? I asked. Yeah, no worries, everything is great, he said. Although I was relieved after hearing his voice, I just couldn't rest. At the hotel, I started to lose myself more and more inside my own voice. I can't be here. I should be with him. I should be there with him. At 4 p.m., he released the rope and began the flight. I'm going to the States, he said, and flew away, vanishing into the sky. While he was going up, he shouted, this is amazing! Starting from that moment, the feeling of anxiety invaded my chest as well as my concerns and prayers. Close to 10 p.m., my husband called the hotel and I ran right away to pick it up the phone. He said, 
The balloons aren't performing that well. They didn't go up as high as I planned, but I'm already flying over the sea, it's okay. I see, but... But besides that, it's everything else okay, I asked. Yeah, yeah, sure, everything is fine, don't worry. After that, we started calling each other every hour. And every hour I asked him if he was okay. He always replied with a good and positive answer, full of hope and determination. Even though he was traveling, when we talked, we felt close to each other. I felt relieved knowing that I could call him whenever I wanted. The balloons are stabilizing, he said in one of his next calls. I also fulfilled my dream of smoking tobacco while flying. I am now at an altitude between 2,500 to 3,000 meters high. I felt once again relieved. And imagine for a moment his face smoking with the purple sky behind him. At 2 a.m. I heard the phone again. It's very dark during the night here. At dawn I will go down and search for an island, so don't worry, he said. While we waited for the first sunlight, I felt my heart drowning more and more with anxiety. This time, I couldn't cheer him up. It's still very dark, he continued. I will wait a little longer. And we waited. We waited for the dawn close to the phone. Exchanging courage and strength with each other. It's starting. It's starting. The sun, it's finally coming out. Why, everything is so peaceful from here, he said. And in that precise moment, I felt an infinite silence inside of me and enjoyed the waiting while I heard the entire universe in one single heartbeat. 6 a.m. and says, It's getting brighter and brighter. What a wonderful sunrise. So beautiful, so beautiful. I wish you could, I could show you, I wish you, you could see it. He screamed with joy. And what a joy I felt hearing him accomplishing his dream. In that moment, all the anxiety ran away from my chest and I felt one of the deepest kinds of happiness I ever felt. Don't worry, I will go as far as it's possible. Don't push yourself too hard, I asked him. I thought the call was still on, but that was the last time we spoke. I thought that perhaps the phone's battery had died. I called again, and again, and again, and as many times as I could, but the only sound I could hear was phone without a signal. The more I called, the stronger my heart beat, At night, I turned on the TV searching for any kind of information and it was on the latest news that I found out that he was missing. I kept myself close to the phone, praying, looking at it, waiting for him to call, but he never did. I was starting to lose hope. 